Hey everybody and welcome to kind of an unusual Let's Look At for me, although I've been saying that for all these fighting game Let's Look Ads that I've been doing, I guess they're not that unusual anymore, it's been kind of like a spring fall of fighting games for me, because I am playing Tekken Tag Tournament 2, full disclosure, Namco Bandai was nice enough to send me a review copy of this, I feel like I said that a lot recently, I feel like I've been saying, I've been feel like I'm saying that a lot recently, anyway this is neither here nor there, uh, but yes this is a copy that I got post-release from Namco Bandai, and it's actually my first foray into the Tekken franchise. I should, should confess here that I am indeed using post-commentary, because as usual, my recording setup has been super wonky lately, and there was desync in the video that I recorded with live commentary. Whatever, this gives me more time to actually focus my thoughts as well, because when I play a fighting game, particularly a fighting game I'm not familiar with, like Tekken, uh, it can be a little bit difficult to focus on what you're saying and focus on the fighting at the same time. So at least we'll have distracted fighting, but my commentary itself will be not as distracted. But in any case, yes, first foray into uh, the Tekken franchise, except I did have a friend in Korea who was super addicted to like playing Tekken 6 of the arcades, and I watched him play a few games of that, but I never played like Tekken 3, which is what most people played. I never played the original Tekken Tag, except for a couple of times at a friend's house. And one time when I was at like a hotel in 5th grade, I rented a PlayStation 1 and played Tekken 2 or 3 for like an hour. Probably cost my parents like 25 bucks, but what did I care? I was a kid back then. Uh, so this is the second Tekken Tag Tournament game. And basically, if you're not familiar with it, Tekken is a 3D fighter uh, with a big focus on kind of like juggling and punishing your opponents when you're down. It also has a huge, huge fucking learning curve, which you will see once I actually get into some combat here. So we're going to start by showing off the online modes. I will say one of the things I don't really like so much about Tekken Tag Tournament 2, overall my feelings on the game are fairly positive. Not glowing, but fairly positive. Um, but it, it does seem a little bit feature bereft compared to like Persona 4 Arena. Like it has this arcade battle, which is like your standard like fight nine opponents and then get through to the end, but it doesn't have something like Persona 4 Arena, which has like a full-fledged like story and campaign mode that actually has like a like a really substantial story in it. This is just more standard like arcade style. It also has a practice mode, but that's basically just like we have a dummy, you can kind of like set conditions for the dummy. It doesn't have a challenge mode, again, like Persona 4 Arena or Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition, which is the other fighting game that I've been playing a lot of. Uh, which kind of makes it difficult to learn Tekken, the ins and outs of Tekken, even the basics of Tekken, because every single character is vastly different. You know, in Street Fighter, uh, you can, you know, if you learn how to play Ryu, then you also have at least an idea of how to play Ken, how to play, uh, you know, Dan, how to play Akuma, and stuff like that. Uh, but in Tekken, you know, if you learn how to play Asuka, that doesn't necessarily mean you're any more likely to know how to play, like, Roger Jr. or Mokujin or something like that. I don't know why I, I always default to the crazier characters. I guess because, you know, Tekken is a little bit of a crazy franchise, as we will see once I show off some of the ending videos. But in any case here, I think that's, it's a little bit feature barren compared to the other fighting games I've been playing. In particular, Persona 4 Arena it should be looked to as like a model for building a story mode into your fighting game. But we're gonna check out arcade mode. This is your standard, you know, like pick tag or pick solo, uh, and then take your team through, you know, like eight or nine fights. I think it might be nine, but anyway. I'm going to play as Asuka and Elisa, because these are the characters that my friend who was super addicted to Tekken 6 mentioned uh, that it might be easy enough for me to learn the basics of, because I was like, hey man, uh, I got this review copy of Tekken Tag Tournament 2, but I know nothing about Tekken. Uh, how long is it going to take me to learn the basics? He's like, how long you got? Uh, you know, five, six hours, which is about how long I've played the game so far, and he's like, oh, you're fucked. <laughs> There's just too much to learn. There, there are basics that you can get, like for example, every face button corresponds to a limb, so like X is left punch, Y, by the way, playing the Xbox 360 version, uh, Y is right punch, A is left kick, uh, B is right kick, obviously, but beyond that, there's, there's a lot of intricacy going on here as I fight Mohawk E Honda. So basically, like I said, uh, it's a 3D fighter, not a 2D fighter, so rather than kind of zoning ourselves back and forth, there's a lot of kind of dodging that takes place in the third dimension by like sidestepping into or out of the screen here. So to a certain extent, uh, when I first started playing, I was just mashing buttons, but now I have like a very rudimentary strategy that I tend to use, uh, especially when I'm fighting like one-on-one -on -one here. We'll do some tags in, in a second here. Uh, but generally speaking, when I'm fighting and when I'm fighting against people, uh, I tend to go for juggles like this and then just try to keep them in the air for as long as I can and do as much damage as possible. Tekken is one of those games where uh, once you're like in the air, like once the opponent has established control over you, prepare as we tag out here, uh, prepare to not actually, you know, step foot on the ground and be in control until you've lost like 30 to 60% of your health. Particularly if you're playing against people online, you are probably going to find yourself pretty goddamn frustrated pretty goddamn soon. So we are just going to continue going on with this. We're fighting Gon Ryu, and uh, I actually didn't notice who the enemy was, but in any case, it doesn't really matter. We're going to do a little bit of juggling here. Now, there are tag mechanics uh, that have not really been covered by me, and the reason is they're kind of difficult to execute to a certain extent. 
Um, who's, I have honestly have no idea who this character is. Now there, the, the roster in Tekken Tag Tournament 2 is so large that there are characters that I fight against, like in this video, and it's the first time I've fought against them despite having like six hours in the game online. Mostly, at least at my level, you're fighting against people who take like King and Eddie and then just spam kicks all day to try to get over you, and you know that speaks a lot for my skill considering I'm like four and sixteen or something online. Uh, but in any case, yeah, there's all these tag mechanics that I haven't talked about now. Basically, if you juggle someone into the air, if you press right bumper, which is the tag button, as soon as you start the juggle, your teammate can come in and you can sort of like play off of one another and get some uh, like much more damaging combos going, or at the very least switch in your teammate uh, if, if you're low on health in that situation and you won't have any kind of penalty. So, you know, normally when you do a tag, it leaves you vulnerable for a, a brief period of time. Uh, however, that was not a good play right there. Uh, yeah, it leaves you vulnerable for a brief period of time. However, uh, if you do a tag in the middle of a juggle, then it doesn't matter. It looks like we got some Elisa versus Elisa going on here. I'm probably just going to continue to spam the uh, attempted juggling move, but if the opponent blocks high or blocks mid, then it doesn't actually work for us. But in any case, we'll get a little bit of a juggle going on here. I think I do eventually uh, get some tag stuff going on. This is what I'm trying to do right now. I remember from like my actual live commentary. It's like, let's just try to get a juggle going here to make some shit happen. Uh, but basically the way the Tekken Tag works, at least at my level, is... I'm sure it's different at the, a more competitive level, but you're just trying to uh, manage... Like, always keep an eye on the health bars of yourself Well, juggling the enemy, and as soon as the, like you do as much damage as possible and they've hit the ground and they're out of your control, trying to just keep them on the ground and just like keep punishing them and punishing them and punishing them. And you'll see that a little bit, uh, perhaps, once we get into the online play. So in terms of difficulty, it's, it's interesting, because I've mentioned that I don't think this is uh, particularly noob-friendly when it comes to uh, fighting games. Like, again, prepare for a lot of comparisons. Uh, Persona 4 Arena and Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition all both have challenge modes that make it easy to learn characters. In Tekken, you're pretty much just like on your own. Like, bring up the move list on the computer, go into practice mode, learn the moves yourself, and eventually you'll figure out a strategy that works okay. But this arcade mode is fairly easy. Like, you can see that I have a rank underneath my uh, characters, like third Dan and first Dan. Uh, basically, you start at like ninth Q, KYU. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm sure someone will correct me. Um, but as you like move onward and onward and you play through the arcade mode more and more times, you rank up and you fight against fighters who are more ranked as well. Uh, but by and large, the AI is fairly easy to exploit most of the time. Uh, like In particular, like the final boss fight, it was super difficult for me. I lost like 15 times in a row. And then I realized that all you have to do really is just block high and then punish them with like a fast like XX combo basically, at least with Asuka, which is like... Um, just like two quick punches and if you just repeat that and make sure your blocking is on like up to point uh, you'll do fine I mean it doesn't work that well against the actual uh, like AI fighters that you have before uh, but it works totally fine uh, against the final boss so there is a little bit of like a, the ability to exploit the AI so to a certain extent I don't think there's any mode in this game that really prepares you for online play I think it's one of those games where you like kind of similar to Dota basically where you've just got kind of got to resolve like okay you know what I'm gonna invest the like 20 to 40 hours necessary to at least get some semblance of skill in Tekken and in order to get that skill it's gonna require a lot of frustration and pain for me basically being online. So this is the character that you see like all the goddamn time online. Basically he's just like a weird kind of like break dance. I mean I think he does like capoeira or something so I'm not gonna try to insult anybody by, by saying that what he's doing is just like dance fighting. Uh, but this is an example of what I mean by the ability to exploit the AI is absolutely there. Um, what the heck was I going to say? He does like a capoeira type thing. And that's the thing with Tekken is like, as I mentioned, characters are difficult to learn. What that also means is that characters are uh, difficult to learn to fight against. So not just like learning the moves yourself. Every character in Tekken has like 60 different moves that they can use. Uh, but additionally, you have to worry about the fact that, you know, like I don't know how to fight against these guys. So it, there's a huge learning curve. Let's just put it that way. More than a game like Persona 4 Arena where there's only what? Like... 15, 12 fighters in the entire game, and even more than a game like Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition where, yes, every fighter has their own intricacies, but you know, you know, very, there's a lot of similarities between like the Shotos and the, the charge characters and stuff like that, but anyway, uh, you get the feel. Basically, this is a game that I feel like, I don't know whether it has a larger skill ceiling than a game like Street Fighter, uh, but it certainly has a much higher skill floor. Like, to be decent at Tekken, it seems to me to, to, to be a lot harder than at least being like competent at Street Fighter, but in any case, uh, we will probably just continue playing arcade mode until we lose here. I'm actually not doing super horribly. Worth noting, by the way, that the um, arcade mode is best of two, whereas the online mode, at least from what I've played, in ranked matches anyway, is uh, best of... sorry, best of three, I should say, for offline. 
Uh, but online is best of seven, so you actually, or best of five, so you actually have to win uh, three matches or three rounds to win the match, not simply one. But we won, so we'll continue onwards here, and we will fight Fang. Again, Fang is a person that I have never fought before uh, until this moment, because the roster is huge. I think it has like 45 characters, maybe 46, and then it has like a few uh, like day one DLC characters as well, which I have, as you might expect, not picked up. I fought a dude online, and I'm not sure if this is paid DLC or if this is actually something that's in the game, but we were on like a, a very blinged out stage is the way that I will put it. Uh, and there was like a dude sitting down and I'm like, that dude looks like Snoop Dogg. And then I listened to the song that was going on in the background and I was like, wait a minute. That is Snoop Dogg, or Snoop Lion, I guess. Um, apparently he did some work for Tekken Tag Tournament 2, like he, he did some work for the soundtrack. I don't know, it, it strikes me as super weird. It was, it was pretty tacky, but at the same time I was like, oh, this is, I can't believe I lost there. Should've just tagged out. Um, at the same time, I was like, oh, this is, this is Tekken. Like, Tekken is, is cheesy and, and weird, and it's, it doesn't mind being like that zany fighting game, as you'll see when we get to the ending videos, and even the customizability, which I'll show off a little bit. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like if you're watching this video, and you're a Tekken fan, stop watching this video. Go find somebody who's like a fan of this franchise, and who has experience with it, and can like actually tell you like, is this worth buying, uh, from a Tekken stand, or from like a, a connoisseur standpoint, let's put it that way, or are you okay just sticking with Tekken 6 or something? Uh, I don't even know what console Tekken 6 was on, that might be PS2. No, it can't possibly be. I don't know. Anyway, that's not important. What's important is that this video is for like Tekken Neo fights, and it's kind of a hard sell, honestly, because this is a game where it is going to take you a long time to actually get into it. You are going to get your ass kicked online in all likelihood, unless you have like a lot of experience in 3D fighters. like. Uh, the last 3D fighter I remember playing was Virtua Fighter 4, probably like 8 to 10 years ago on the PlayStation 2. So, uh, like, I've, I've got a little bit more experience in 2D fighters now, but 3D fighters are crazy to me. But in any case, that's what I mean, like, if you're, if you're a fighting game, you're a relative, like, neophyte when it comes to fighting games and you're picking, that was awful. Uh, you're picking a franchise that you want to go with, and you're thinking about Tekken, I would almost caution you and be like, maybe you want to check out... Persona 4 Arena, if you're looking for something like that. Maybe you want to check out, you know, Street Fighter. There's a lot of good tutorialization in that game. This game is basically like, you want to learn Tekken? Fuck you. It's like, it's like if University didn't have classes, instead it just like dropped you in the library. It was like, you got four years, figure it out. So, uh, that was the Fight Lab. I actually recorded a little bit of the Fight Lab, but I cut it out because I didn't think that it was that valuable. That's basically the game's tutorial mode. Uh, but the tutorials at the level that I was doing, I finished it actually like... Uh, it was about an hour and a half, like I finished the whole tutorial, and it's basically like it starts with like move left and move right, sidestep, jump, crouch, and eventually it gets up to things like, you know, like wall breaks and doing uh, like tag assaults and things like that. But I did it all with my gamer tag signed out, so when I signed in and actually recorded this video, uh, it was back to the like use up to jump, and I didn't really want to show that off on video. But basically that's like the challenge mode or the tutorial mode in the game. I think it is insufficient to actually teach you uh, anything beyond the basics of Tekken. But anyway, here we are in the customization mode, and I think this is uh, another thing that kind of emphasizes to me that this is not a game for people who are new to Tekken, this is a game for people who are kind of into this sort of like customizing these characters that maybe they've known and loved. We can make like an M. Bison Elisa here, we can make a, a cowboy version of Elisa here. Notice, by the way, uh, the kind of prohibitively long loading times just to put a cowboy hat on. That's why I haven't spent too much time here uh, in the customization modes, because to me it's just like a pain in the ass to have to sit here for like, you know, it, it sounds like a first world problem, but I had to sit here for like eight seconds every time you choose like a new aesthetic thing. And I mean, we're running this on, what is it? It's 2012, so we're running this on like seven year old hardware in terms of the Xbox 360, but still, I like that Wild Samurai, that's what we're gonna end up going with. Kinda looks like the Cat of Nine Tails from um, The Binding of Isaac, Wrath of the Lamb, anyway. And you know, we can choose glasses and stuff like that. We'll, we'll set up like a whole costume for Elisa here, and I'll show you the one that I've made for Asuka as well. Uh, but in any case, like, is the customization enough for me to keep coming back? I don't know. I, I do know. The answer is no. <laughs> uh, we'll give her some aviators as well. Uh, and, you know, we can give her, like, a Chinese dress or an army uniform and fingerless gloves. Call back to the Boombox music video. But in any case, um, by the way, I should mention that we're using, in order to purchase this stuff, we are using, uh, gold, or G, basically. And the way we get that sweet G, 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 G. 
baby is by uh, picking up, well basically like every time you fight you get a little bit of a reward in terms of gold. I'm just gonna call it gold because calling it G makes me feel like a fucking idiot. Um, but you get a reward in terms of gold and that reward is based on like how much health you had left, how much time it took you to kill them. Uh, sometimes you'll just like have a fight and then it'll be like, surprise, you got a lucky box and the lucky box will open up and it'll be like, oh, extra 500,000 G, awesome. Uh, but stuff is pretty expensive, you know, you can see you can get this bubble blower here on our head and it will blow bubbles when we're in raid status. That's a little bit silly for me. We'll just equip all of our items now. The, the interface on this is a little bit weird, like, we don't, uh, like, when you buy something it's not automatically equipped, you have to go to a separate equip menu. We can get, like, new LED lights for our background, it's super useless. You can get a new panel for our character, again, uh, pretty unimportant. I'm liking this, like, Gangster Santa in boxing gloves, the Lisa that we've created, though. And then after we finish this, I guess we will just take the game online. We have to take a portrait of our person first, but then we'll take the game online and I'll show you that because the main strength of this game is not the offline play. The offline play is perhaps satisfactory would be the, the nicest way that I can put it, but the real place where this game shines is the online play. I had a few concerns about the fact that, you know, maybe this is going to be laggy. I know this is unfair because this is a Namco game uh, and Street Fighter Cross Tekken is Capcom, but I heard that Street Fighter Cross Tekken had uh, terrible net play on the PC and on the console, so I was kind of worried just kind of like, hey, you know, fighting games have to have good net play if they're going to have that replay value. But I'm pleased to say that in all of my, you know, 25, 30 matches of Tekken Tag Tournament 2 online, I've come across pretty much zero lag. Like, I'm not sure if it's just better about matchmaking or if it's, like, more restrictive with people with good connections. Uh, maybe, like, it matches people with light connections to each other. But I have run into pretty much zero lag. It seems like occasionally there's been a, a handful of dropped frames, like my... If my eye could possibly tell that, just without, you know, actually looking at recording and slowing it down. But, um, by and large, the net code, at least the net play, I should say, because I don't know shit about the code, has been fantastic. What is not fantastic is that every time you want to go in here, you have to download this ghost data, and sometimes it takes, like, a minute and a half. So, th these are, like, the little things that bother me about this game. It's like, why are the loading screens so long? Why do I have to go through this shit every time? I mean, maybe this serves some sort of incredible importance, but when it just tells me downloading ghost data, that does not really seem like that's something that I really need all that much. Like, I've never even entered the ghost mode. There is a ghost mode in this game, I have no idea what it does. But anyway, uh, we'll enter a ranked match here. You can choose, like, where you, like, what kind of rank limits you want. Like, again, we're, like, first Dan or something. 4 and 23, that's so bad. Um, we can choose whether we want to go, oh my god, I forgot about Asuka's costume. So awesome! Uh, but, and of course our Samurai San Santa here, almost a Samurai Santa, which I guess does sound a little bit more Japanese perhaps. Uh, but yeah, you can choose like your, your ranks and stuff, like what kind of restrictions you want on the amount of people or the type of people that can join your game, as well as connection limits and stuff like that. I haven't messed around with the default settings, I don't even know if you can for ranked matches. Uh, but what I do like is the same thing I liked about... Uh, Persona 4 Arena's online mode, where basically you choose a character before you enter into a fight. And we also get this nice little practice mode that we can kind of tool around in before, uh, you know, while we're waiting for an opponent to come, basically. So here you should see that I am at least capable of doing some of these combos. Once I get into the actual heat of the battle, uh, you know, it becomes a little bit more of a problem for me. There are also, I haven't even mentioned, like, tag throws. Maybe we can do some of those a little bit later. Uh, but there are throws and tag throws. I don't tend to use them, but I tend to get abused by throws a lot. Because, you know, I'm pretty goddamn bad at Tekken. But the thing with Tekken that I should put out, point out here for people who are not familiar with the franchise at all is that the mechanics are, like, different for every single player. Like, right now, I'm trying to figure out what the launchers are for Elisa here. Because normally, uh, if you're playing as, like, Asuka, she has a launcher that's, like, forward X and then B, and that'll kick them up in the air. She has a launcher that's, like, down, forward, Y, and that launches them into the, the air. But those... Launchers are not universal to every character, or even like universal to several characters, except down forward Y is pretty universal, but uh, there's a lot of different inputs and a lot of different intricacies to learn for each character. I've mentioned that like five or six times now, it's worth continuing to bring up. One thing I will say about the matchmaking is I'd say like for the first 20 games, uh, it took a while to kind of sort out where I was going to be, like even as I was losing like 10 in a row, 5 in a row, 6 in a row, stuff like that. Uh, I was still getting matched with fairly good people, and I think the reason is it, it takes a while to kind of build a sample size to see how good you actually are. Fight. Apparently we're going to fight in, you know, Paris, France right here. I, I wonder how long it's been since there's been a, like a substantial blimp presence on the skyline in, in Paris or any city for that matter. So things have gone fairly well so far. Again, notice that it is uh, best of three online now. Sorry, uh, you have to win three rounds, uh, not best of three because that would only be uh, win, win two, I guess, yeah. 
the same way it is offline. But in any case, uh, so my basic strategy for online is uh, swap out whenever you get even remotely low on health, because if you get, like, I'd say if you have, like, 40% less or 40% or, or less, sorry, I apologize for the way I'm stumbling over my words here, but I'm watching this beautiful fight in this leggy minx in the Santa outfit here, but if you get even, like, remotely low on health, you can find yourself in a difficult position pretty fast, because they can juggle you and just take, like, 50% of your health uh, right away. So King is probably, he's the dude with the leopard head here. I don't know anything about his backstory. Uh, but King is probably one of the most used players online that I've seen. I'm not sure if it's because of the fact that his low kick wounds the shit out of you and keeps you staggered for a second there, which is a total pain in the ass. It might just be because the dude has a leopard head. I mean, I can get down with that. Same way, you know, certain people play uh, certain girls in fighting game, games just because they have large breasts. I don't know. Dude with the leopard head seems like a, a noble pursuit for me. Uh, but this is actually, like, this guy seems right around my skill level, even though he's probably a little bit above it, and he will probably end up kicking our ass. I honestly don't remember. This is like the most white trash Christmas outfit I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, robot wings notwithstanding. Anyway, so we'll just try to take him out here. I mean, I feel weird doing post-commentary on this. Yeah, baby, spin it. Sarah Hughes. Um, because it's like, I'm trying to keep some suspense going in these fights, but I'm like, ah, I'm pretty sure I lose this one. I don't know if I lose this round, but I'm pretty confident that I lose this match. Uh, but yes, what the heck was I going to say? After a while, uh, it, it sort of put me in, like, shit tier. I think the game was basically, like, it recognized... I'm not very good, so I, you're, I'm gonna match you with people who have also, you know, pretty much just sucked ass. So, you know, when I'm playing two people who are 2 and 7, I'm happy. But when I was, like, 1 and 9, I was still playing people who were, like, 2 and 0. Because, I, again, I think it's still, like, it takes a, you know, 10, 20 game sample size to figure out where you belong. And then it's like, okay, you really are garbage, we believe you. Again, I have no defense against throws at all. Uh, you can tech out of those. You've got to be pretty goddamn precise. Uh, with your inputs are pretty quick once you see that the throw is happening, but I uh, am not, so please just swap out. Thank you. It's weird watching myself, because normally when I watch myself and I do post commentary, I'm like, man, I suck. Those are like big mistakes I'm making, but when I watch this, I'm like, yeah, you know, I didn't do too bad. This is probably like some of the best Tekken I've ever played, and I did it while I was recording. Uh, and I know that that really uh, kind of... I, I was gonna, what's the opposite? Not the opposite. Anyway, I'm just rambling here. Um, that really is kind of indicative, that's a good way to phrase it, of, of how shitty I am at Tekken. To watch this, where I'm getting, like, shit on by this guy who's not even really that good, uh, and say that it's some of the best Tekken play in my entire life. But, uh, it's, it's the damn truth. And keep in mind, this is, uh, you know, from zero minutes of play in the Tekken... Oh my god, that should be the end. Just fucking put me out of my misery. I didn't think I'd be able to get a swap out there, but I guess I did. So we have a chance here, but it's not a good chance. That King combo is just absolutely wrecking me. Uh, yeah, hey, welcome to KFC, what can I get for you? Uh, I'll take a, a King Combo. No, no, like, not, not the big crunch combo. I want the dude with the leopard head and the side of mashed potatoes, and, uh, yeah, definitely throw in the gravy as well. So we're just gonna basically, you know, continue the fight here until we absolutely get our asses totally kicked. I think we only do two fights online here, and then I basically just, like, show off an ending movie. But as bad as I suck at Tekken Tag Tournament 2 online, I do want to stress that this is, like, the premier mode of the game. And I think if you're a fan of Tekken, or you're coming to this game to kind of get that competitive multiplayer aspect, uh, you're gonna enjoy it, because the online play is... I, I hesitate to use this word lightly, but the online play is superbly done. Flows well, no latency that I've run into, or no substantial latency. Obviously, there's never, like, non-zero latency, but, uh... Never, like, meaningful or, like, game-affecting latency. Uh, which is awesome. And usually, like, at least now, I mean, I'm doing this video, like, one week post-launch, but there's there's been a, a pretty substantial community surrounding this game, even at my terrible low level. Like, I've never waited more than a minute or two for a game, which is, I, I guess, pretty standard for fighters. Like, the same thing happens in Persona 4 Arena and Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition, but uh, it's nice to know that you're not gonna, like, buy Tekken Tag Tournament 2, if, assuming you buy it close to release, anyway. Uh, and, you know, just be online and be like, Oh, there's nobody around at my skill level. Maybe if you're Justin Wong or something. Full disclosure, I have no idea if Justin Wong is actually any good at all New at Tekken. Challenge. See? That was what, like a two minute wait? No problems whatsoever. So we'll get in here, and I think this fight goes a little bit better for me. Again, the loading times, occasionally a problem. It seems like sometimes like we just went through like a loading screen to get to a loading screen, which can be frustrating, and then this loading screen is actually pretty goddamn long, but obviously, you know, it's doing things behind the scenes, it's making connections that my puny 
human brain as a video game commentator can't simply understand, uh, you know, without a computer science degree or a network engineering profession or something like that. Anyway, this guy is playing as Kunimitsu Yoshimitsu, which makes me think maybe I've run into this guy before, or maybe uh, Kunimitsu Yoshimitsu is just a, a very common combination, because I've seen that combination at least a couple of times online. I think it's just like, if you if you master, like, or you get good at one dude with a sword, why not play as both dudes who have a sword? So Yoshimitsu's a pain in the ass, he's fast, he's got his katana. Uh, there are actually, it's worth noting, there's like weapons in the game that you can actually buy in the customization menu. Like, you might have seen when we fought Fang, uh, he had like this bottle that he threw at us. That's actually like not standard as far as I know anyway uh, You can just buy that in the customization menu and equip your character with that You can also equip like knives and stuff like that, uh, but for the most part they Have like really high damage moves associated with them. However, uh, they also have like huge windups So if you get hit by them, it's almost like you kind of had it coming basically So This fight's going very well for us so far uh, My standard combo with Asuka is like XYB that's the one you will see a lot uh, that was trying to do it right there, I think. Uh, and apart from that, mash the shit out of X and definitely back A, which is that move right there. Uh, can function as a launcher and also get some distance. And then mostly I just try to punish them with like dash moves. That's the that's the XYB combo right there. Uh, I try to punish them with like, uh, once I knock them down or manage to juggle them once, just like dash them down and start doing those like high damage kicks or with uh, at least a high damage punches. That was an example of me trying right there and failing miserably. I have no idea. What's up with this, uh, like, Kunimitsu's hands turning yellow? Again! Oh, you're gonna breathe fire on me? You think you're, like, Dalsim or some shit? Um, I have no idea, uh, what a lot of these moves for their characters are. There's just so many goddamn characters in Tekken, well, in Tekken Tag Tournament 2, anyway, that to learn the int intricacies, or at least even the general, like, basics of each one, would take an uh, unbelievable amount of time. It would take, like, years, or at least months, invested in the franchise, which I don't have. And I kind of wonder about the, the place of Tekken these days, because, like, when I when I was in Korea and I would see, like, Tekken machines in the arcade, maybe this is just, like, my fighting game ignorance, but I was like, people still play Tekken? Like, there's a there's a Tekken 6 that people, like, line up to play? Uh, so my understanding, or at least my impressions, I should definitely tag out, don't fight it, you fool! Um, my impressions are that this is a game that is way more popular in Asia than it is in North America. I mean, we don't really even have arcades that much in, in North America anymore. Uh, but even so, I don't hear much, many rumblings from like the competitive Tekken community. But again, that might just be me, like being completely ignorant of that side of the fighting game scene. Like, is Tekken an Evo or something? I honestly don't know. Uh, but in any case, you know, maybe this will revitalize it a little bit. But I kind of feel like Tekken needs almost like a reboot. And I wonder if maybe like. If this had not come out for this generation of consoles, like if this had been... This is coming out for Wii U, I should point out. Um, eventually, whenever Wii U comes out, I guess this November. Uh, but if this had been like a pack-in, or like a, if Tekken 7 is a pack-in for like a new Xbox 360... Again, I'm talking out of my ass. Not a pack-in, but just like a launch title. That's the kind of thing that could get more uh, life breathed into the Tekken franchise. Because right now, I just kind of feel like... You know, Tekken Tag Tournament 2, this is a game made for people who love Tekken. There's nothing wrong with that, uh, but this is a game that is probably not going to convert uh, too many non-Tekken fans to the franchise. And that's really kind of the perspective that I wanted to get across in this review, is like, if you're a fan of Tekken, you're buying Tekken Tag Tournament 2, right? Like, how often do new Tekken games come out? Once every two years? Once every three years? Uh, if you're not a fan of Tekken, is this the jumping in point for you with this franchise? Sadly, probably not. It seems like a totally competent game. I, it's impossible for me to judge it from the standpoint of somebody who, uh, you know, is actually into Tekken. But as someone who has been kind of nursing a passing interest in fighting games over the past few months, like, it's been a, a very, uh, productive summer for me in terms of fighting games. I'm gonna get my ass kicked here. Uh, yeah, like, I've played, I've played several. Uh, like Skullgirls, and again, the other two that I constantly mention that I, I will refrain from here. Uh, but for someone with just a passing interest in fighting games, it's difficult for me to, to really justify spending that much more time on Tekken, because at my level, I'm like, this game is not for me. This is a game for people who have been honing their skills over the past three uh, Tekken games since the last tag, or even maybe since tag, or maybe since Tekken 3, uh, and, and who want to make sure that they're, you know, with the, the most vibrant and kind of bountiful Tekken community. So this is a, for all the marbles here, Yoshimitsu Kunimitsu versus uh, Asuka, Alisa, best of one, and I am just basically being spamming garbage. I should really swap out of there instead of just letting the fire get breathed all over me. Uh, and it's a, a close fight here. I en enjoy that move uh, for the sweet up, up Santa that we get. Can't really call it an upskirt, can you? 
And with uh, Elisa, wow, I did not expect that to do that much damage. I guess I took him by surprise. He probably could have swapped back to Yoshimitsu and maybe had a chance. But hey, we actually won a fight and we got a lucky box. Awesome. What do we pick up here? Like 200,000 G. Fantastic. Uh, so as you can see, I'm not the worst Tekken player in the world. I just wanted to see what license was because that's like weird phrasing, but it, it's just like the profile of the person that you played against. So I kind of feel like that's just like a weird translation thing to see like license. It should read like profile or something like that. But in any case, there is also, before we go check out some of the ending movies here, uh, there is also like an overarching like Call of Duty Elite style, uh, so I'm not going to say ARG, but it's kind of similar to that, called the World Tekken Federation. So if you go to like worldtekkenfederation.com, you can like sign up for that, you can view your stats, uh, you can register teams and like compete against teams from around the world. Uh, but I didn't really check that stuff out because honestly, do I really want to be part of the World Tekken Federation? I think they would consider me like their laughing stock right now. So obviously one of the key factors in Tekken that everyone is into is this idea that Tekken has like an insane tone or like in an absurd mood and tone about it, let's say. I mean, this is a game that has like pandas and kangaroos and, you know, wooden fighting dummies as characters. So what we are going to do uh, is check out one of the ending movies. I believe in my live commentary right now, I'm saying what I just said basically, which was like, I don't think this is the, if you're brand new to Tekken, I don't think this is where you jump in. I think maybe you wait three years or two years and then you pick up the next Tekken game and maybe it'll be a little bit more user friendly. But who knows? I mean, I, let's be honest, I don't know shit about Tekken. All I know about Tekken, I basically like verbally diarrheaed into the video. Overall, game gets a thumbs up. Like, I definitely feel like if you are a fan of Tekken, this is going to, it's Tekken, right? If you're not a fan of Tekken, it's a hard game to recommend. Particularly if you're just thinking like, I'm gonna finally get into a fighting game. Uh, because I don't think it is the most user-friendly fighting game. But anyway, I have three ending movies here. I've got the one for Asuka, as you might expect. I've got the one for, uh, Elisa. And I've got one for some motorcycle dude. It might have been, like, Hualrong. Or Hualrang. Uh, let's check it over here. He's the dude with the goggles. Yes, I do. Um, but we'll watch the one for Asuka, I guess. And I will mostly shut up here. <laughs> I mean, it's a big street. You can just like, why don't one of you move left, one of you move right? Apparently in Japan, everybody has hair like John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever. I promise you, things are about to get real weird, like right about now. What did I tell you? So that's Tekken Tag Tournament 2. To articulate my thoughts in like a too long, didn't listen version. If you're a Tekken fan, I'm the wrong person to be listening to. If you're not new to, if you're new to Tekken and you want to get into a Tekken game, prepare to fucking die Dark Souls style and just get punished like frustratingly online probably. The matches that you saw from my online play were not necessarily representative of most of the matches that I played and just had like 50% of my health bar taken away the first time I was launched. But in any case, everything is competently done, uh, and I think for Tekken fans, you're gonna find a lot to like here. It's just unfortunate that for Tekken Neo fights, there's not something that is a little bit more hand-holdy and, and helps you actually learn the ropes of this difficult game. But in any case, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.